Hi and welcome to how you can create some nice looking textures for your low poly mesh. We'll um, create uh, a PBR texture workflow for um, this house asset in this case. And we are going to tackle a few things in this tutorial. So first off, what we won't tackle is how you basically start modeling in Blender and how you create UVs. So for those kind of things, if you are very new to Blender, I'll advise you first getting the hang of that. And there's a lot of cool tutorials on YouTube where you can learn how to create good UVs and how to model low poly assets. So what we're going to see here, uh, we have those two kind of houses. One is only half. This is actually what we're going to start out with. So as you can see, this is basically my house. And the reason it's only partly here is because the rest of it will just be mirrored. So I only have those kind of things to texture. The rest will basically just um, be copied. Right, so here is my UV layout. So this is my um, unwrap of this 3D object into 2D space, basically. As you can see, it's very tight. It should be pretty tight, get it as tight as possible. So you have the biggest amount of texture you can work with. That's always very helpful. So spending a lot of time on the UV, even if it's a low poly mesh can really help you later on and uh, is very good. So now I'm going to show you a result. As you can see, we have this house here. It has some brick walls. It does have some windows. And it also seems that it has some depth. And for that, we need to build a high poly mesh first. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's start by deleting, or no, we're not actually going to delete this. We're going to rename this um, test results. And we're going to just remove this from our scene for now. I'm going to grab this house here. You can grab stuff with G or whatever, but what we're actually going to do is press N, no, yeah. I already had it here and we're going to move this thing to be at zero. So that's something you always want to do if you're modeling. Have all your stuff at the zero location and now it's very important for building the high poly mesh that we're first going to make a copy. Shift D, copy the stuff. We're going to call this high poly and we're going to disable the low poly in the viewport. So now this is going to be our high poly. And um, for starters, I'm going to assign some colors to the different parts of this house because later on I also want to bake color information to a map so we can use it in texturing and can be much faster at texturing. So I'm going to remove this material here and I'm going to start with new and I say roof. I'm going to click on the roof and I can press L to activate the linked faces with it. And the rest I think I'll just do by hand or most of the stuff I can do by hand. And I'll advise if you follow this tutorial, um, I will have the link in the description to this asset, but I advise you to actually do this with your own assets because it's this way. I think it's easier to learn and you can, I think this is too much. Actually, I can probably remove this. Uh, it's, um, where was I? Yeah, you, it's easier for you to, to understand and keep learning if 
you're using your own ideas, your own things that you produce, uh, I think it's very important to work with your own uh, creative ideas and learn technical stuff through that. Right, so we're going to assign a color to this. Let's give it something brownish, maybe even darker, because it's normally those roofs are very dark. So assign. And you're going to do this with basically all of your uh, all of your faces from this low poly mesh. What I also did is, as you can see now, you can see the colors in the solid viewport shading mode. And that's because I enabled this viewport color and I basically copied the color that I assigned. You can do this, uh, you don't have to, but for me, I, I like it because it's more helpful and I don't have to go into the material mode to see what I did. Um, I'm going to assign this also to brick, actually. So now we have those bricks here, and we have those roof, and we have this thing that's kind of wood. I call it wood. So now those three textures are here. So what's next? So we want to give this whole thing more details, right? And the first thing I actually do is make a loop cut through here. And maybe actually I probably do two loop cuts, yes. I'll do two loop cuts and you can see this is weird here. This, those seams don't look that nice. But I don't care so much about the roof at the moment. I much more care about those three things here. And what we want to do is to, 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 to create more detail in the mesh but so that the, uh, that the details we add are squarish. So we actually want to avoid faces that look like this here. We want to create faces that are like this. Because later on we will use um, some modifiers uh, to help us create some details in those uh, faces. And then it's important that the mesh information doesn't have two wacky faces, but actually has very squarish faces. But you will actually see when we're there. So right now I have this face here selected and I'm going to create the windows, I guess. Something like maybe this. Uh, how do we want to have the windows? We can think about that. We maybe want it like this. I'm actually going to create a new material. No, maybe I'm going to assign this to wood first. Because we want maybe to have this kind of uh, outline. And I'm going to just simply further invert this. And now we're going to do something that normally you don't do in high poly modeling, but for our case, we are only using this high poly to bake to the low poly. And so what we want is to have a geometry that can be represented in a 2D normal map. And so I'm just going to push this inwards a little bit, All right? And then what I'm also going to do is create a sharp. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this into a new mesh, these windows, because now we want to add more details to this, but I don't really necessarily need to add more details to the other stuff, right? So that's why I only want to work in this mesh right now. And I'm going to, first of all, I'm probably also going to make one more cut. And I'll push it inwards and I scale it a little bit. That looks great. And now this will be split. I think we want to have maybe only a split of 
three. And now I'm going to basically, you can do uh, different things here. I mean, the, the, the way you model, as I said, I'm not going to cover modeling that much, but the way you model those details is pretty much up to you. How, how, however you like to model those things is fine. It's just important that the information can later on be baked to normal map so it looks good. I'm just going to create one Windows and then I'm going to copy this to the rest of my faces here. It just needs to work for me, right? So actually now we can go here and maybe call this uh, window frame and we'll assign a color. It's maybe maybe we'll, we'll go a bit crazy on this house. I like crazy stuff. And we'll also choose a viewport color. Oh, and then we need, of course, to assign those faces here. And now I'm going to select my windows. And I'm going to assign a bluish, or maybe a little bit more greenish. I don't know. I like to keep my colors pretty light. Like even those colors, they're, pro they're going to change and there, there will be a lot of change when we're coming to texturing, but I still am already kind of trying to see in the model process how it could look and get a feel for it. Like just approximately how it could be. And we'll assign those. No, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So now what you can do is because in this information here, you have those three faces and those three faces should be equally, uh, should be equal in size, right? So what I'm going to do is now to use this windows and I'm just going to join it up again with the rest of my mesh. And sometimes I like to also use this button here, remove doubles. And you can see there were some uh, overlapping vertex and they will be removed. So that it's only one vertex. And what that means is if I, use, if I move this, you can see the whole mesh moves with it. I'll actually also go here and change the auto smooth to 30 because I don't like those weird shadings here. And we'll later on have to create some different shading for the roof because now we can see it's very blocky and we don't want that. But for the faces on the brick wall, it's fine. So now I'm going to copy this stuff here. I can also work with the UV. That's also why I have this enabled. And I'm going to copy this, move this over here. And now I'm going to remove that face. Same. Let's do it twice. Same with this. And I'm going to remove this face here as well. Now you can see we have already those three windows. And basically the way you model windows, I normally do it like this. But there's, I mean, if you think that's a dumb idea, there are better ways, of course. I'm pretty sure there are. Uh, it's just something I like to do. All right, so I added some more windows. As you can see here, I added the smaller windows. Here I added this kind of roof windows. Here I copied the same windows and put it here on the same uh, height level. And I basically only have half because now afterwards, I can show you how this works, but I mean, of course, you'll already know what I mean, is if I add this mirror modifier and I would mirror it, you could see this would be one, become one windows, right? So now I want to just show you very quick how we can actually apply this uh, modifier to mirror stuff because those windows we have uh, made together or I have shown you how to make them. And we want to basically have them on the other side as well. So what we can do is just use this mirror modifier. And I want a mirror on the 
y-axis. That's actually why I like to model uh, in this zero location of the pivot, because especially for low poly modeling, not so much for high poly modeling, I would assume, but in low poly modeling, it's always easy to have a clear a point of orientation. And in this case, it's the zero point, right? And you can really also work with the numbers here. And it's, you don't need to have like crazy math skills to understand where you are and what to do. So it's just, just, it's just a way to keep things organized. And now I'm actually going to apply this modifier right away. And I'm going to go into this mesh and I'm going to remove this. Because the way I have modeled my low poly mesh is I know everything is exactly the same width and height, right, on those things. Because those mesh, this mesh here is just a copied part of this on the other side. And so when you're doing your low poly mesh, be sure that you have like a clear geometry, right? That you have stuff, if it is mirrored, be sure that it really is mirrored. Um, in a high poly mesh, you can give yourself a bit more freedom, I would say, because we're using this to bake onto the other mesh. But even here, if you keep it clean as long as possible, that kind of helps you to generate good looking maps. Fine, so now let's think about this door here. And something I would advise you to do with all your low poly mesh, even though if you're going for maybe something very creative, something that's more fantasy-like, something that maybe doesn't really have to be in the real world, to orientate yourself at the real world, right? So in this, in my case, it's pretty obvious. This is a kind of style of house you find in northern Germany or Denmark uh, that has like this old kind of cool roof going on. And I want to have a look at some footage of houses. So in this house, you can see it has like those bricks and it has like this kind of setup going on here on top. Maybe I want to replicate this and uh, but I will probably make it smaller because I want my door to be much smaller because I think this house is a bit bigger actually. But you can already see kind of what kind of vibe is going on for my house here. And we'll probably start by... I mean here sometimes you can go in more experimental ways. Uh, let's say if I want to have this doorknob, you can work with passes and convert them to meshes, so forth. Uh, there's a lot of cool tools you can use. Sometimes I'm just very lazy and there is no idea I have, so what I actually do is like super simple uh, idiosity mesh creation. So in this case, I'm just going to make this smaller, maybe something like this. And I'm also going into the side view, no snapping, please. And I'll make something that's a little bit smaller, something like this. And I'm going to delete all this unnecessary stuff here. Right. And then I'm going to create a face here. And I'm not going to create a face here because this is going to be mirrored anyway. Just be sure that when you have like stuff that's on the edge and you want to mirror it, that this, that you select this mesh and use the snap function to really be sure that it snaps to the edge of your mesh, right? Because if you have it somewhere, let's say if you have it just a little bit here, and then you're going to use this mirror. Uh, sometimes I'm here. Ah, and of course, with the mirrored mesh, if I, I had to probably give it to here, to, to, to I just joined the whole mesh together. I don't want the mask, I want the mirror. You can see that stuff like this will happen and you don't want to have that, right? So now 
I will delete this. All right, deselect this, not delete. I have to be careful with words sometimes, and I'm just going to <laughs> remove this from this mesh. And I'm also, again, going to select, I'm actually going to select this vertice here because it's the outside. And I'm just going to snap this vertice here so the whole mesh will be in the right place. Um, and I think what I'll actually do is I'll scale my whole thing a little bit on the x-axis. I will distort my mesh, but I want to have a bit of a bigger doorway. Uh, yeah, maybe something like this. Perfect. Now, from this, I can, I could go on modeling, or I could uh, do with different objects. There's a, as I said, there's a lot of stuff you could do. But in my case, I probably will go and create something out of this here. Um, I can see that here, actually, there is no faces here, which isn't that good. So what we'll actually do is remove those from the selection. Like, uh, you could avoid this by working more carefully, but I don't really want to. So I join up with this again. And then what I'm going to do is make some seams so I can select stuff easier. We'll take care of this, um, this thing here later. Ah, maybe, maybe we can actually do this. Yeah, I, I put some more loop cuts in this. And I'll actually also select those. I mark them as seams. I will use this and I will extrude, not at extrude, I will push this outwards a bit. So what that will do is give me a more rounded geometry. So this will be seen visibly in the normal map that we're going to bake. And then I just continue doing stuff. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to enable this clipping modifier here. So then I'm probably going to scale everything down on the X axis. I'm going to move them here. And I'm also going to scale them on the Z axis. And then I'm going to snap them here. Maybe we want to have bigger windows. Uh, maybe only only two will do. Yeah. Maybe something like this. Yeah, I like this a bit more. It's not perfect, but it's going to do. And I'm going to select all those things. I'm going to this uh, Windows material. I'm going to deselect my windows. And I'm going to assign this also to this wood. So. I'm just going to add some more stuff uh, with the door and so on. It's a very similar process of how I showed you with the windows and the rest of the mesh. All right, so I added a lot more stuff to my mesh here. And um, I added a little, more, little bit more detail on this part here on this um, arch. Now we have some pretty great detail already. Actually, this windows here 
we probably have to copy this over here. But it's the same mesh, so what we can do is just select all those faces here. We're actually going to deselect this. We're going to make it into a new mesh. I'm going to mirror this, not on the X, on the Y. I'm going to apply this and I'm going to remove this. Uh, is it two or is it? Uh, not so sure, actually. Uh, it's a, uh, okay. It's a kind of different mesh back here, it seems. But that's not, that's not to worry about. We'll just apply this. We'll actually, for now, um, make this modifier not visible. Um, yeah, okay, it's just that we need to merge some vertices here. So I'm merging this and I'm merging this. Ah, it looks fine. Yeah, this is very simple geometry right here. So the simpler you keep it in this kind of stage, the better it is, 